had some pretty good experiences. I mean, I've had some, we've had some pretty good shows. One yeah. of the best ones, I think, was um, when we played the Esplanade. I mean, we didn't have a really good crowd, but it was what we were invited to play, and it turned out to be this room full of cougars. Like, it was just the most surprising thing. And they had this band that was on that was playing Divinal Covers, and they had, and we were sitting there with our other buddies in another band called Sex Street, and they had all, well, the lead singer had dressed up in a, uh, well, in a transvestite outfit, which was great. And um, it, it was a good experience, experience because we got paid a pretty decent amount of money yeah. that night too, and we played for no one at the end of it, which, which wasn't great, but um, we were appreciated. You know, and that was nice. Not sad trying to sound like, you know, we expect to appreciate all the time, but, you know, like, it was just a cool experience. Oh, we've had a lot of good experiences with them, and, and I think, as typical of playing in any music scene in the world, you're always going to be playing shitty venues with shitty people on occasion. Um, there's one particular place in Collingwood that I think will probably go unnamed <laughs> that's on Hoddle Street that was... Absolutely atrocious. Uh, it wasn't so much the venue. The venue was really cool. It's it's kind of it's very like it's really grimy and run down and totally dilapidated, which is cool and it gives it character. Except that the people that run it are fuckwits. We played a show there one night. We brought about twenty people, and then they had a couple of other bands on the lineup as well. And the understanding was when you play these venues, generally you'll get if you're not charging ticket sales, you get normally ten percent cut of the bar tab, like whatever drinks they've sold, and on occasion, a couple of riders as well. So like a couple of free drinks. We didn't get any free drinks. And then when it came to the end of the night, when we went to go and ask us to get paid, he got a couple of gold coins out of the cash register <laughs> and put three dollars in the hands of each person from each of the, not like each person in each band, but like one band got three dollars, the next band got three dollars. <laughs> and he, he claimed that that only sold ninety dollars worth of drinks that night. When I bought like sixty dollars worth of drinks myself <laughs> that night. So we haven't played there again. So <laughs> I suppose that kind of makes us sound like criminals and shit, but it's it's worth bearing in mind that like it's the principle. I guess. Like yeah. when when you do end up playing, it's not you're not just getting paid for the forty minutes. It's everything that you don't see. It's having to cart all your shit all around the city because no venue will provide a decent backline anymore. It's having to go and practice for hours and hours and night on end and writing music and like you know we're not selling. EPs or albums or anything like that, we're not making any money off of recordings. And I don't think we would charge people anyway if we could. Yeah. But like, you want to get reimbursed for your actions sometimes, and three dollars is a bit rude. Yeah. Oh, there's so many that are out there that, yeah. you know, pretty much, I mean, the majority of experience that we've got playing live shows, I haven't really seen a band where I've been like, oh, they're shit. Like, they've all been really talented at what they do, and, you know, it's always been a pleasure playing with all these different Melbourne artists because they all, love what they're doing, you know, and it's enough. Yeah. And particularly the state of the industry at the moment, like, no one's going to be making money doing this kind of thing, like, and, and it really, like, it filters out people that are in it for, I wouldn't call it the wrong reasons, but, like, are, are in it to kind of live the rock star dream, because, like, if, if you're going out and you're playing live music, you have to love it because you're, you're, you're facing so much resistance, it's never easy to do. Um, just because it's a pain in the ass, it's a real hassle. People don't get it that how much actual effort that goes into doing stuff like this, and people just see a really well-known band perform and they think, "Oh, it must have been so easy for them." But they've probably been doing that for seven years, you know, mm. playing to no one, playing to the bacteria. Um, we've got a couple of things planned, so in the more immediate future, we're going to um, do some sort of live studio recording. So we'll set up. Set, us, set ourselves up and try to, try to get like a decent audio capture of what we're playing and then we'll have someone filming it as well. So, Because I, I, I think that's something that's not done nearly enough anymore is just footage of bands playing so you can see what people are doing, not some, you know, some artsy music video, which is cool and everything, but it's sometimes just nice to see musos. So we'll do a couple of them and then um, next year we'll start recording an EP and we'll put that out and hopefully see what happens.